All right, so now we've had a little bit of a break and we're going to jump into some of the technology that we can use in order to facilitate this gifted and talented creativity in our classrooms, okay? So the first one that I'm going to show you is fluency. Different technologies that we can use. Remember, fluency are those lists that we can do, ways that we can list numerous things. So I'm going to show you some technologies we can use to create these types of lists. All right. This is my Google Drive. You should all be familiar with your Google Drive at this time. This happens to be my FFOE um, folder that I'm in so that you guys can see the folder. But what I really want to show you at first is how to use Google Forms. Google Forms is a great way for students to make lists and then it can compile the lists for you into Google Sheets. So in order to create a Google Form, you would go to New, and then it has the common docs, sheets, slides. And then if you come to more, you can go to Google Forms. And then when you click on Google Forms, it will open up a form that it allowed you to create. For this particular exercise, I've started one because I wanted to have some of this kind of preemptively begun before we started so that I can show you some of it. I always name mine whatever I'm going to do. So for this particular one, because I'm showing you all fluency, I just named it fluency. My students are accustomed to me putting instructions here. Normally when you first start a Google form, it's asking you to write your description here. So this is my description. I will also verbally, I will usually make a video like I'm making for you right now where I'll explain to the students what I want them to do and how I want them to go about doing that. But a lot of them won't watch my video <laughs> to be really honest and you may find that to be the same. So if I have the written directions in here, then they know what my expectation is. So we talked about having them time themselves for three minutes. So I asked them to time themselves with their computer or their cell phone or a home assistant like their Alexa or their Google Home, several of them in my um, district, it might, not my district, in my school, have the funds and they have those types of things at home. So I'm just giving them some options that they can think of of how they could time themselves. You can definitely word this differently if you know that in your school district the kids are not going to have an Alexa or a Google Home or something at home. And then they're gonna allow themselves three minutes to come up with as many things as they can think of, all right? And then I give them a caveat because they're children and they need to know that there should be some rules that go along with this. So it's a fun game to keep our minds sharp. Uh, no cheating, so no going over the time limit just because you wanna be the kid in class that has 50 of them, right? Um, because there are some of us who want to, you know, win at all costs, and so we want to have 50. So no going over the time limit, and it, or no using Google to find the answers. Just your brain and three minutes, okay? So, and I would probably even say for this fun, I might, you know, put fun all in caps so that they know that it's fun. You know, this is only supposed to be fun, fun, fun. Okay, <laughs> just reiterate that it's for fun so that they don't, if you want it to be competitive and maybe you're gonna give them five extra points on, a, on something, you could do that. Um, I try to keep it fun just so that they're enjoying themselves and doing this. And then once everyone is finished, I will create a Google Sheet, which this is actually gonna do that for me. And it's gonna have all the answers and then we can look over them as a group um, again, I'm not really sure how what virtual le learning is going to look like, but I can put it up in a Zoom or do something of that nature depending on what we decide to do and we can all look at it together or I can put it up in a video and just make a little short video where I show them, okay, everybody came up with this answer, everybody came up with this answer, but nobody came up with this answer and this answer and so these are some things that we can look at. So for this particular one, I was thinking of my first unit in science for seventh grade science. Um, and we talk about cells and cell structure and what 
the organelles are of cells, but I thought to take that further, they have to know that cells make up living things, all living things, plants and animals. So I thought, well, I could have them name something that is made of cells. So I started off and I have all of these. I would suggest doing at least 25, giving them 25 spots, and maybe they don't fill in all 25 spots. So I'm going to show you how you can duplicate this so that you don't have to keep typing it over and over and over again. And I'm going to show you some other things that you can do in forms really quickly. Okay. So what you can do with this is you just go here and it's already on there. You can make it required which means they have to put something before they can submit, or you can make it to where it's not required. And then, you know, if they're getting down to 12, 13, 14, 20, 25, and they can't think of anything, it's not required that they have an answer in here for them to submit. For me personally, I would, I, I know my students because I'm the specialist and I tend to have some that are a little stubborn when it comes to this and if I gave them the out they would turn in the whole thing with no answers so I do make some of them required so that they have to do at least some of them I would probably do about 10 of them that are required and then I would go and the rest are not required it's really easy because everything on the list because they're listing with this fluency everything on this list is going to be something that's made of cells so this little icon here means to duplicate and you click on that and it simply duplicates it and you click on it and it duplicates it and you click on it and it duplicates it and you just keep going and keep going until you have about 25 of these. It's a little tedious, but not as tedious as having to type it or copy and paste it a million times. Now you'll see right here that there are some options in a drop down that you can go to where you can have it be short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, check boxes, drop downs, scales, all kinds of things. For this, for the fluency, I keep it at short answer, okay? So they just have to give me a word, a couple of words, you know, if they wanna be specific about a type of bear and they wanna say grizzly bear, polar bear, black bear, short answer gives them that option. I don't normally put it as a paragraph because they don't, they shouldn't need a whole paragraph. They're just trying to write as many things as they can as quickly as they can in order to get this created so that they have this list, okay? Now, here's something else that you may have noticed. A lot of people will ask their students in the very first question to put their name, last name, first name, class period, I don't tend to do that. I tend to make one of these and then I'll make it for first period, for third period, for fifth period, okay? And I make a different one for each period. Then if you come to settings right here, and, and let me go out of it really quickly. So if you come to settings, which is this little um, gear right here by the send, and you click on that, there is a box that allows you to collect email addresses. So the student is signed in with their Google Suite account, their Gmail account. So once I collect their email address, I know who they are because their email address is their name. So I don't do the extra step of having them go in and put their name in because I'm getting their email address automatically. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can have them put their name their last name, their first name, and their class period, that's perfectly fine. I'm trying to get them into this fluency really quickly so that they're jumping in and just thinking of that list and they're just listing, listing, listing. So I'm not adding anything extra for them to have to do. For me, collecting the email addresses does this for, for them, okay? Also for something like this, I'm gonna limit them to one response so that they're not going back in and kind of messing with our our lists and they, they're like, oh, well, I went and after I did my list, I went and did some research and now I know all these other new things I could add to the list. So um, I don't let them add it, edit it after submitting, you can, and they can see some of the summaries. I don't need any of this for this particular thing. There are all these other great things that I could show you how to do and we could do a whole training on Google Forms, but right now, just for fluency, I'm showing you that. 
Another thing that I like to do, rather than make it bland and boring, is a lot of learners are visual. And so I want to customize the theme. So right now, this is very boring. It's very bland. I mean, the kids are going to be like, really? You know, and we're teachers and we like to cutesy things up. So in order to do that, you come up here to the little painting. Um, oh, my brain just lost that word. You know what you know what that is and you can customize the theme so you can either have a theme color or you can have an image so you can choose images from here that they have and they have a lot of great different images that you can do um, if I wanted to I could do something that's one of these living things since we're talking about things that are made of cells or you can upload and you can upload your own image of a cell. Let's say you've downloaded an image of a cell. It's something that you've been looking at as a class and you can download an image of a cell. Um, so you can go through this and kind of choose whatever you want. There's all different kinds of options here. I'm just going to choose the butterfly. I like the butterfly very much. And I just click on that and click insert. Okay. And then that's going to take me just a minute and it's going to insert that. And then if I want to, I can come over here on the side now that the image is added and I can change it. Maybe I want it to be more of a reddish pink or maybe I want it to be purple. I can add custom colors in here. So maybe I want it to be more of a blue right there. And then I just add that on there and boom, it's beautiful. It, it's more of an aesthetic thing. It's not a necessity thing. Um, it's also something that you can use to throw them off to see if they can think even more if you're kind of front loading them with some information. So let's say my fluency was name something that is orange and I made the whole background color orange and then I put a picture up here of just oranges. Well, can they think beyond the oranges and can they think of other things that are orange, right? Um, so, so sometimes this can trip them up and it can make it so that they're focused, you know, maybe because I have this butterfly, they're only able to think of insects. And so I'll look and I'll see, and everything that's made of cells is all of a sudden some kind of insect that they can come up with, right? So it gives you a little insight depending on how you do this. And it sees who can really think beyond some of those things and who might be stumped by those and who you might be able to help with showing them how to make connections to other things so that they can have some fluency beyond just what they see right in front of them, okay? So this is a great way to do Google Forms. Um, the eyeball just lets you preview it so you can see what it looks like. It basically, it looks like this. <laughs> when you come back to responses, of course, I've had no responses yet, but on mine, because this is mine and I made it, once I've sent it and I've given the kids a link, um, which I'm thinking in Schoology, we give them a link. It looks like it's fairly similar to Google Classroom. In Google Classroom, I would have given them a link and they would go to it. Do you see this icon right here? It says create spreadsheet. I can click on that and then that's going to build a spreadsheet for me that shows me by the student's email address what they said to all of these things, okay? So it's a great way to see all of their list together and then to have a spreadsheet that you can share with them so that they can also see, I mean, you can share the spreadsheet as a link and they can just see what everybody put or again, you can do it something like this, or you can do like a Loom video or something so that you can show them that, okay? So, whew, that was a lot on Google Forms, but Google Forms is a great, great way to go about doing fluency, okay? The next thing I wanna show you is a way that you can have the students do this, again, I would recommend that you have them do this in about three minutes, but if you want to give them a little bit more time, you can. Um, this one is going to be, not that it's more complicated, but it's a little more work for them. And it's something that, again, you're gonna have to teach them how to use the technology, just like I'm teaching you how to use the technology. But once they have it down, it's really very simple to use. And I think it's a lot of fun to use, okay? So I'm gonna show you the next thing that we can use. 
So if you go to Google, if you're good with the computer, you would just type wordart.com, okay? And it'll take you straight there. Or you can go to Google and type in wordart.com in the Google search, and you can search for this, all right? The great thing about this is you can sign up for it, you can create a login with your Google, but you don't have to. They don't make you do that in order to create this word art. You can just go to create now and it, it's fairly self-explanatory. So if you have students that are good with technology, they probably won't have any problems with this, but let me just show you how to use it so that you can show them. In these boxes is where you would type your list, your fluency, okay? So let's go back to, um, I don't think I know enough state capitals to do state capitals. <laughs> I generally go back to science. Let's go to English language arts. Um, let's do authors. And I don't know that I know enough authors to do this, but we'll try. So they're going to name as many authors as they can think of, of anything. It can be authors of poems, short stories, novels, whatever you want to do, okay? So they would time themselves. Each box is a new author, okay? Every time you want to add another word, add another author, you're going to the next box. When you're typing in the box, you can just hit enter and it'll take you to the next one. Um, <clears throat> and since I'm talking now, I can't think of any authors all of a sudden. And I know you guys are all screaming at me and you're like, this is an author and this is an author. Uh, <laughs> I'm, <just laughs> I'm really stumped all of a sudden. And of course, all of my books are in another room. So, um, oh. Uh, <laughs> I really am stumped. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, I really do know um, lots of authors, I promise. <laughs> I have to think. Um... <laughs> And I probably spelled that wrong, Kurt Vonnegut. Um, but, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> I guess you can tell that I read a lot of um, horror. Since you're getting a lot of horror novels. Um, anyways, I'm just going to put author and writer and... Oops. Writer. I'm just going to put some words so that we can see how this turns out because I can't think all of a sudden I just lost my train of thought and then my bird is squawking and my phone is ringing and I just totally lost everything that I had planned. Okay, so you have all of these words. Let's say you have 25 words. We'll pretend that I have 25 words. Well, now they can go down to shapes down here and there are all these different shapes that you can turn your word cloud into, okay? You can turn it into people. Let's say you wanted that man. You could turn it into just a regular cloud. You could turn it into a geometric sign. Um, I'm going to go with people. I'm going to say it's this author is very happy because they finished their book. Okay. And then you can go down to font and Right now it's as slacky, but you, I mean, you could pick anything you want on this list. Let's say I wanted Pacifico. I'm just going to choose that. And then the layout, I can choose if I want all the words to be horizontal so that they're read like that, or if I want them to be vertical, or if I wanted them to be random. Let's just say I want them to be random all over the place. And then style, what color do you want the... Um, you know, you can pick a custom color. Maybe I want them to be, you know, orangish. 
So I pick something over there. Maybe that's my favorite color. Okay. Or whatever. Okay. And I can make the background transparent. I can have a background image. I can do all of these different things. Once I've chosen all of these different things that I want to do, and I've picked my color, and I've added it to my palette. Sorry, I forgot to click that. Then I click on this visualize link. Do you see this visualize right here? And it's going to visualize it for me. It's going to create it. Ta-da! So it fills in the shape with all the words that I came up with. So I came up with Stephen King. Um, you'll see that he's on there and you'll see that he's over here. Okay. And you know, there's rice a couple of times and writer and, and so let's say I don't have 50 words or something. It's going to just fill it in with all the words that I have. One of the great things about this is then the student can go to download. They can download it as a PNG or a JPEG. These are image files, okay? Either one of them. I generally set, suggest that you download it as a JPEG. I think a JPEG file tends to have a better image quality. Tell them not to do any of these because these are all pay for, okay? So they're going to have to pay for those. I would just have them do the standard JPEG and they can download it. So I made one earlier and I did terrestrial um, land organisms and I just put a few of them in there and this is really like a little hedgehog. And so, so the nice thing about this is, you know, let's say I've made the hedgehog and then, you know, somebody else made the person and somebody else made, you know, any number of shapes that are on here, a cloud, an emoji, a geometric, whatever. So now I have all these cute little images that I can create Google Slides or something and I can have each student enter their image on their specific slide and we can share these slides and then we can all look at them together and see what is this fluency that everybody came up with what is this word art that everybody came up with and so they're doing this creativity in a way that they got to choose shapes and colors and so they're they're adding some of that like standard creativity that which you would think of where it's a little more artistic and things like that and so they're adding to that and then we get to see what everybody came up with. So again, this is wordart.com and sorry I couldn't think of any authors, but <laughs> that is another way. So there's one final way that I want to show you that you can do this and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it. But I just wanted to talk about how you could use this for fluency and you may have thought about it already um, as I was talking you can go through and you can use Padlet, okay? So you just search for Padlet, Padlet right here, you are beautiful. And you can log in with Google. So very nice. I try to do everything linked to Google that I can so that I have just quick, quick access to what I'm doing and 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 what I want to save and share and I can share it in the Google suite and it's easy for the kids okay so I actually created these already um, for my ELA class and um, something that I'm doing with my bitmoji classroom which I don't need to tell you all about my whole life but anyway <laughs> let me show you a little bit how to use Padlet just in case you haven't used Padlet and Padlet is another one of those where you're only allowed to use so many and as as far as I know um, it's four so um, you just make four and use those, okay? And then you can kind of reuse them if you, you know, fix them up. So to make a Padlet, you're gonna go right here and click on make a Padlet. And it's just, it's very user-friendly. It walks you through everything. And there's no wrong way or right way to use this. It's all about personal preference. I tend to like the wall or the grid when we're talking about fluency, just because it's gonna show um, in a way that it just works for me. So let's say I select wall, okay? It pops up for me with a randomized background that they've already chosen. And then over here on the side, it's gonna allow me to modify it. So this is where I'm gonna go in and make changes to what I want going on with my Padlet 
before I share it with my students and allow my students to add to it. One of the nice things about this is you can send it out and the students can be adding to it real time. So if you're doing synchronous and asynchronous learning in this new environment, then you may have students in the classroom and you may have students at home that are online in person with you. So all of you can be adding stuff to the Padlet together, but then the link can stay out there. And then those students that are able to access your class later in the day, they can add to it. And then you can revisit the Padlet as a class the next day and see what people have done. When you're going to modify your Padlet, you would change the title to whatever. Um, uh, let's do flu, flu and see. Um, orange, since I was thinking of oranges earlier. And then a description. Again, you could put a description for the students or you could just simply put Name something that is orange. If I could spell today, Woo, I'm struggling today. Okay, um, the next thing you can do is add an icon. So you're gonna click on icon and it's gonna bring you all kinds of little emojis. You have kitties and food. So I would probably do an orange because <laughs> that's very simple, okay? And then I would come back out of that. All right. Now, when you go further down, there are other things that you can do. So I'm, I hope right now that you're on your computer and you're listening to me and you're trying this out on your own. So as you go down, you'll see that this wallpaper already came up. Well, I can click on this wallpaper right here and I can choose. Let's say I just want a solid color. Maybe I just want orange to be orange. Name things that are orange. You can do gradients. So again, if I find a gradient that I like, I could go through here and I could do an orange gradient maybe. You can do textures and patterns. Maybe I like the bricks. Those are orange. Pictures, okay, all kinds of pictures. And lastly, you can add your own, okay, which would be something on your computer or something like that. You can do anything you want. This is like decorating your classroom. You can decorate your Padlet any way you want. And then you can choose a color scheme. There's only two options. Um, I don't know. I just usually leave it on this one. <laughs> and then the font, there's only a few options for font. So again, just depends. One of the things that I always like to do is display their name above their post. So maybe if they come up with something really interesting that's orange that I never would have thought of, and I'm like, oh, you're right, that is orange. Then I can say, oh, good job you know, Jill, that really is orange. I never even thought about that. You know, did anybody else think of that? So we can have their names on there. I like to have their names on there so that I can give them a chance to call out. And then I, where do the new posts appear? They a post first, okay? So as someone posts something, it's gonna post up here and you'll see what they've said. And then somebody else will post and in this grid format, because I chose this wall grid format, you're going to see what somebody else posted and what somebody else posted and what somebody else and it'll keep going and, and each new person theirs is going to be layered on top. One of the things you can do also is you can allow them to comment to one another. Since this is just listing, 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 I... I would not necessarily do that. I would not have them comment to one another, but that's something you can look at later. Um, you can require that there's an approval, but that means you have to look through every single one. But if you find that you have students in class that maybe need more of that approval because they don't know how to filter themselves, then you can do that. And then you can also filter the profanity out of it, okay? So, so those are different things that you can do with Padlet in order to just have this fluency in your classroom, okay? 
Again, if you want to have them name things that are orange, but you want to put a blue background, <laughs> if you want to put a picture of your dog in the background, you can do any number of those things in order to do that. The main goal with fluency is you're just putting as many things as you can think of in a specific time frame. Okay. So when you're using technology, I've only shown you a few. I'm sure that you can think of tons and tons of other ones, ones where they can make word art, word bubbles, um, make some kind of timeline where they're doing words, you know, this is the first one I thought of, second, third, fourth, whatever. There's numerous ways you can do this. Don't get bogged down with all of the different ways that you can do this. Simply pick one that you feel comfortable with and practice it with your students and teach them how to do it and let them try it and see how you guys like it. And then if you like it, do it a couple of more times and enjoy it. And if you don't like it or they didn't like it, then learn something different and try something different. Today, I've shown you three different ways that you can use technology to have fluency in your classroom. Um, just really quickly, it was Google Forms, so you would just copy whatever you're asking them over and over and over again, do it about 25 times, give them a chance to put in at least 25 answers. Remember, if you want to, you can get their email address so that you don't have to get their name so that they can just jump straight into the form and just be doing that fluency, okay? And then you can create a Google Sheet from that and you can look at all of the answers that everybody has put together and you can see these fluency lists. The next thing you could potentially do is wordart.com. On wordart.com, you're allowing the students to make art, word art from their list. My list wasn't great, I froze, but that's okay because that's gonna happen to your kids, right? Before they go in to make the list, there's not gonna be any of this pressure <laughs> to make a list in three minutes. And then all of a sudden the three minutes are gonna come and they you know, may choke. So it happens, it's okay, and that's great because you can show them that maybe this time I didn't get it, but maybe next time I will get it. And then it fills in that art completely, even if they got four words, right? It's going to fill in that shape completely with all of their words any way they want it so that they can, they can add color, they can add shape, they can add which direction the words go. So it's giving them this freedom to not just make a list, but to make a creative list, okay? And then the last one that I showed you um, that we just did was Padlet. Again, Padlet, you get to choose your own settings, but it's gonna give your students a chance to, to name something and their answer is going to go up and then everybody can see the different answers and they can add as many answers as they want to and so you're going to get to see all of these different answers here and you know if somebody's typing faster than someone else and they got that and then you know they may be like oh i already got that oh no you took mine you know real fun things like that so it becomes that kind of fun environment to do fluency okay so i hope you enjoyed this fluency part going to pause again and go on to the next thing. We're going to talk about technology and flexibility in the next part.